Hey guys, welcome to today's shoot. So today I have two brand new products from Small Rig Cine. These are the new fixed ND filters from Small Rig Cine. So there are two filters. You have the ND.6, which is a two-stop filter, and you have the ND.1.2, which is a four-stop filter. So in this video, we're gonna be testing these out on a shoot, so let's dive into it. Here is the ND 1.2, just comes in this plastic case, just like any traditional ND filter. And inside it has a nice little foam protectant and a little finger slot for pulling out the filter. Other than that, it just comes in this nice little protective film and you have the actual filter itself. No frills or anything extra here, just the actual piece of glass. So here you can see it. This is the ND 1.2. This is the Tilta Mirage matte box and it's designed to fit right onto 95 millimeter front diameter cinema lenses. So this is just a clamp on matte box. It goes right on there just like that. And then you just clamp it straight onto the lens. Otherwise you can use threaded adapters like these to go on the lenses but for right now this will work perfect for what we need and this actually just holds the glass in there just like this so you just release it and the glass piece comes right out just like that here's the markings here at the bottom corner ND 0.6 and it just tells you there it's a 4 by 5.65 filter and then over here on the other corner you have the new small rig cine logo here that's the only indications here on the actual filter by the way guys small rig did send out these indie filters for me to test out and review on the channel after i made my video about this tilta mirage matte box so if you're interested in learning more about this matte box in particular i'll link to that video there but just know that small rig does make their own small lightweight matte boxes a couple different variations of them as well and some of them even have nice little filter holders that go on the outside of the glass here and you can actually just install them by sliding them in the side if you have one of those matte boxes but I have the Tilta Mirage so maybe I'll have to invest in getting some of those nice little protectors that go on here and a couple extra parts for these now that I have these extremely high quality filters from Small Rig. So if you have a matte box that doesn't have the filter tray and you just have a drop-in matte box, that's literally what you do. You literally just lay it right into the grooves just like that and then pull your locking mechanism switch and there you go. So it's in there. You don't have to worry about it falling out or anything like that, but having some of those additional filter tray protectors would definitely be much more desirable than just dropping the filter in like this. Then you just drop your matte box on and screw it in. And there you go. So what exactly is an ND filter and why would you need one? Well, ND filters actually reduce the overall amount of light actually coming into your camera. So this FS7 actually has built-in ND filters, which most cinema cameras actually do. But in this case, let's say you have a camera that doesn't have fixed ND, like this Sony FX3 that I'm shooting on right now. So you can actually shoot with your lens wide open. In this case, I'll be shooting at a T2, which is in like similar to an F2 in a photography lens. And I can reduce the overall exposure here and shoot wide open without having to change anything. Because like in video, you always have to abide by the 180 degree shutter rule, which in this case, it's actually set to 180 degrees because I'm on a cinema camera. But if you're on a photography camera, you can set your shutter speed to double whatever your frame rate is. So let's say you're shooting at 24 frames a second, 24 times two is 48. So you shoot at what whatever's closest, which would be a one over 50 shutter. So in this case, I'm using a 180 degree shutter. It's actually set to shutter angle. So my only question is, where were all these budget options when I needed them when I was going to film school? You guys are so lucky. Oh, by the way, guys, if this is our first time meeting, I'm Ray Valencia, and this channel is all about filmmaking, gear, tips, and tutorials just like this one. So if that's something that you're into, make sure you subscribe.
got the other shoe shot and then we move back. Yeah, but doesn't this also look a little blurry right there? See these like red yeah. dots there? That shows you what's in focus. See that red? So are you saying that I should trust the red dots and not my eyes? Saying, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So the price of these lenses actually comes in at a very fair price of $159 each. But considering how much filters were whenever I was going to film school, this was a $300 filter. And it's the same thing. Let me show you. So there you go. Same thing. ND.6 for $300 or an ND.6 for $159. So that's why these small rig options are actually a nice budget option. Very high quality and very affordable for pretty much any filmmaker. So whether you are using it, you know, even as a crash cam or something like that, these filters are a lot less, you know, painful if you break one than one of these. And I have seen people drop these before and it does hurt. That's one good reason that you might need an ND filter or if you're shooting in bright conditions like outdoors where it's nice and sunny and you still wanna have your lens wide open and have that shallow depth of field or blurry background, then you're gonna to need to invest in either a fixed ND filter like this or a variable ND filter that screws onto the front of your lens. So usually I use something like this label maker and put labels on here, but if not, you can use some letters like I got these at Home Depot and I just stuck them on the outside of the cases here and now I can tell which one is which because there are no markings on the outside of the case so there you go all right back in the gear cage that is a wrap on today's shoe and I'm really enjoying these small rig cine fixed ND filters they're just really high quality and you don't have to worry about vignetting or anything like that you just get a nice even shade over your whole image and that makes it great for shooting wide open with your lenses especially if you're in bright conditions like being outdoors or if you're in a bright studio setting like I was today but anyways these were sent out to me from small rig so I do appreciate you guys sending these over for me to test out and use on the channel I'll definitely be using these on my professional shoots from here on out But if you guys have questions about anything at all Be sure to leave those down in the comments below and hit that like button while you're there too It really helps out with getting the video out to more people so they can see these as well And finally make sure you subscribe for more filmmaking gear tips and tutorials just like this one Shoot for the stars and I'll see you guys very soon in the next video